Hi guys, so today I'm going to be answering some motherhood questions, okay? So the first question is how did you feel when you first found out that you were going to be a mother? I was very excited. I was super excited. You guys know that, you know, I battled infertility for basically four years. But the thing is that when I got pregnant with my second child, that is, well, first child, Cora, I knew, I anticipated it, like I was ready, like I knew I was going to get pregnant that month, even with Ava as well, like I planned it, okay? So basically, after ovulation, after like six to seven days, I start testing, like I was that, you know, in tune. I just start testing, 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 like I start from the, I start getting the faintest line ever to the darkest line, like, so yeah, I was excited, I was, you know, very happy, but I wasn't particularly very shocked, I don't know. I don't know if anybody can relate to that. What was the most significant change in your life after becoming a mother? Hmm, I can't really say one. I have so many significant changes. First of all, body, okay? Your body is no longer going to be your body. Like, you're going to be shocked at how much your body is going to change, okay? I think it depends on the person as well and your, you know, your, um, what do you call it now? Genetics and all of that, okay? But someone like me, my body, changed drastically after i gave birth and the more kids i had the more my body changed okay so after i had cora i didn't really have that much change but after i had ava that's when i saw a lot of change and after sophia i had in fact <laughs> so much change so yeah that's one significant change but i think um, aside body i think the fact that you now start functioning on, on less sleep is the one that shocked me the most okay because before i started having kids i used to be someone that used to sleep a lot okay before yeah before i started having kids before i got married when i was in school i don't used to joke with my sleep even as a young child my parents used to say that once it's night like this that others will just sneak out and go and sleep all of you will be there in the parlor just in laughing talking i would just sneak out and go and sleep okay so i never used to joke with my sleep but after I, after i had kids my sleep now or my sleep routine now is almost non-existent like sometimes i sleep three hours in the night sometimes i sleep six hours sometimes i sleep nine hours it just depends okay but i sleep more now i mean sophia is turning three in december so i sleep more now than i used to sleep However, it's not like I don't sleep like throughout the night. I'm, I'm either waking up to go and pee myself or to go and take them to pee or I wake up and think of something and I can't sleep back. Okay, so I think body changes and my sleep change is something that I would say those two things are the most significant changes I would say I've, I've had in my life. There are other changes though. There are other changes like mindset, mentality, even the fact that you are a lot less selfish than you used to be. I think that even ties into the body thing as well because I breastfed all my kids and a lot of things happened afterwards. <laughs> my body was not my body anymore. How did your relationship with your partner change after having children? This is a very good question. How did our relationship change? I think it's up and down. Our relationship changed, I won't say for the worse, like it wasn't bad, but when my kids were babies, my husband and I were more focused on being parents and taking care of the babies than we were about our personal, like emotional needs, okay? You know, at some point he was taking care of me like one of the children, you know that kind of thing, like because I needed him in that way and the kids, the babies needed us in that way, okay? So we were more focused on, you know, working as a team and just raising these babies and taking care of them, right? But now that my kids are older, Cora will be turning eight next year, um, Eva will be turning six, and Sophia will be turning three in December. Now that my kids are older, I'll say our relationship is much, 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 much stronger than ever before, like ever, even before we got married, you know, our relationship is now very, very strong. I don't even know whether it is because we have kids now or it's because we have spent so much time together. I mean, this is 12 years together. So I don't know if it is the um, duration of the marriage or the fact that we have kids, but our relationship has is stronger now. And I would say I love my husband now more than before. Okay, I don't know if it's, if that makes sense. Like now I love him as a father as well. So I'm like, I'm not just a husband, I'm a father now, okay? So like, I need you. <laughs> I need you and I like, I like how he is as a father. So I think that's increased the love. What advice would you give to expectant mothers about preparing for motherhood? First advice I always give everybody, sleep as much as possible if you've never had kids. Like if you are pregnant with your first child. I know it's during pregnancy, it's not easy to sleep sometimes, you know, sometimes you start, sometimes you sleep a lot, while sometimes you can't sleep, okay? 
whatever the case is, force it, my dear sister, force her. Because once these children come, you're going to be shocked at how much or how less you are going to sleep. Your body is going to be shocked at how little you are going to be sleeping. Except you have so much help and you know, you're not breastfeeding, you're not taking care of your kids yourself, you know. Your sleep pattern might not change much. Or if you are lucky and you have a baby that sleeps throughout the night, even though I've not seen, the best you can see is a child that sleeps four hours or six hours straight. Even six hours is a stretch, okay, for newborns, right? So your body is going to be shocked at that. So please sleep as much as possible now. Even though you can't, you can't ever prepare for it, that's just the truth. You can never be too prepared for motherhood. You can never be too prepared for the lack of sleep okay so just prepare but just know that yeah you're still going to be shocked be ready to delegate don't do everything yourself for me personally how i prefer delegating is i prefer delegating all the housework to every other person while i focus on my babies okay because i like to breastfeed i, I like to take care of babies normally like i love it okay so if you i remember there when someone wants to carry my baby for me it's like uh, it's like okay <laughs> you know what some other people they're like ah oh, thank god just take baby for me but no me it was the right way around though when they come to carry my baby i'm like you need to take the baby now okay so for me i feel like um you need to be able to delegate chores or whatever it is you want to delegate if you want to delegate the child care then it's fine okay but learn to delegate don't do everything yourself because you will break down postpartum depression and you know postpartum blues and all of that most of it is aggravated by lack of help lack of support system and you know then your body going through all that shock of having a newborn baby as well so get as much help as possible you don't have to cook if you don't have to cook you don't have to sweep if you don't have to you don't have to do anything if you don't have to do it okay so anything you can delegate delegate it and then just for me i actually advice bonding with your baby i feel like it does more for the mother's well-being mental health and all of that when you are bonding with your baby you're just breastfeeding or feeding cuddling sleeping waking up eating having your baths you know for someone else to bath the baby you know and bring the baby back to you okay and then just be as prayerful as possible because it's prayers that is going to help you and your baby it's not by every anything you read because trust me no matter what you want to read no matter what i want to tell you today when you have your own child, your body is still going to be short. <laughs> you are still going to be very, very short. Okay, now the next one is how do you balance your personal goals and interests with the responsibilities of motherhood? Um, the truth is that it is a forever battle. It is a forever battle for me because again, I'm very hands-on with my kids and I'm a stay-at-home mom. In fact, being a stay-at-home mom might actually be helping me better, you know? So it is a forever battle for mothers. It is something that you, you are always going to hear mothers talking about how they juggle their personal goals with motherhood. It's just for you to, what me I personally do is that when I want to take care of my kids, I take care of my kids to the max. When I want to do my own thing, I do my own thing to the max, okay? For instance, I spent the whole of yesterday filming videos. Even when my kids came back home, I was like, nope, 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 no disturbance. I want to film my own videos, right? I'm doing the same thing today as well. But from Wednesday, Thursday, other days, I can focus on my kids and just spend time with them and I don't feel guilty. That's why I don't have mom guilt, neither do I have job guilt because whenever I want to do what I want to do, I do it to the maximum, okay? So you cannot come and say I do not put in my 100 because I literally almost killed myself for you. So allow me to have my own time and have my own thing, okay? So yeah, that's one thing I can say I do to balance my personal goals and responsibilities. Um, yeah, that's it basically, but also having a good support system. I can never emphasize that enough, okay? I have two helps. I have a husband who is very hands-on. I have Gateman. Uh, what else? Like, I don't do much mundane activities, okay? I don't do too many mundane activities. I don't wash clothes. I don't wash plates. I just cook. And by cook, I mean go to the market, buy sometimes. So I go to the market buying the ingredients, leave, give, it for, give it to them. They do everything and I come and just do mixing. I'm a mixologist, okay? So because I don't do so many mundane or what I consider mundane activities, I have enough time to do my own thing or take care of my kids, okay? What are some of the most rewarding moments you've experienced as a mother? Some of the most rewarding moments, I think it's just you know, seeing my kids grow and seeing their different different milestones and seeing how my kids are turning out as children in the society, okay? <laughs> now, I'm not saying my kids are perfect. I'm not saying they don't have they don't have their own wahala. They do, but my kids are, from what I'm seeing, they are well-rounded children. You know, they are 
they are, I don't know, I won't even give myself credit for that, but my kids are actually good children. Like, I don't know if you say your own children are bad children, I used to be, but me, my children are good children. So I think it's very rewarding for me seeing that. But if I, to, if I should go into details, I would say the fact that Cora is a very caring person, sometimes she can be controlling, which is part of her being caring. Uh, Cora is very caring. She's, she's very, she can, I, I see Cora as a very good first daughter. Like if I were to say, okay, I want to go out and leave Cora alone with her siblings, I feel like she will do very well because she will command the hell out of them. And she does Cora does like, hey, she's very caring, which is quite funny. She's very, very caring though. But when it comes to commanding them and making them do things, like she's so controlling, which is good for me. It's not good for them. They don't like it, but it's good for me as a mom. Then Eva, Eva is very affectionate as well. And she's very organized. She's, she's very, I don't know, Eva is just, there's something about Eva. She's very organized and she's very um she's very soft-spoken as well, but she's strong. Girl. She's strong, but she's soft-spoken. Then Sophia, Sophia is a bundle of joy. Sophia is just a you can't you can't not laugh if you're around Sophia. It's not possible. There's no way you'll be with Sophia and you're not going to laugh. It's either you will laugh because of her drama, or you'll laugh because of her attitude, or you'll laugh because she's done something funny, or you laugh because of her laugh. Her laugh is very contagious, okay? Those are the Things about my kids that I consider very rewarding. Then there's something else that Sophia does in the morning. Every morning, Sophia leaves her room and comes to my room to cuddle with me. Eva does it sometimes. Cora doesn't do that one. She she don't grow finish. But Eva does it sometimes. But Sophia does it a lot. She will just come, enter the blankets under the blanket with me, and just hold me, and I'll cover her. Especially when the, the morning is very cold and the AC is on, I'll cover her and we'll cuddle for some time. I love it. Like I look forward to it. Like anytime she does not come, it's like it's in happen. Are you, are you, are you, have you broken up with me? <laughs> Can you share some of the challenges you faced as a mother and how you've overcome them? Some of the challenges I've faced as a mother is lack of sleep. I'm going to keep talking about lack of sleep because it has caused so many things in my, in my life, okay? In my body, in my mental health, lack of sleep has caused so many things. So, um, I'm trying now to sleep more. I'm delegating some things to my husband, like waking them up in the night to go and pee. I think another one is patience. I'm, I'm I'm learning i think i was a patient person <laughs> my kids have tried it they have tried it to the moon and back or anything like that okay so i think i was very patient but maybe not so i think i'm learning how to be more patient with my kids i'm learning how not to shout too much even though that's one battle i don't know i don't know when that one is going to be i'm going to overcome that one but yeah how has your perspective on work and career evolved since becoming a mother my perspective has always remained the same i don't think i've actually evolved that much however i have more empathy for women who have to work okay for those who have to work I have more empathy for them, right? And I understand why a woman would want to, you know, will I sort of, I won't say choose her career over her children, but actually choose, you know, to pursue her career despite having children. I can understand that before, I used to be one of those people that would be like, eh, for what? Like, I'll leave my child and go to work. When my child, and leave my child with a stranger and go to work. Like, I can't, it can never be me. Okay, but having children and, you know, growing with them and just, you know, interacting with more mothers and and having more of my friends become mothers, and including my sister, I now empathize more with women who, you know, choose to remain in their career and pursue their career to the highest levels and all of that. I have more empathy for them. However, on the flip side, for me personally, okay, if you've been watching me, you'll know this. For me personally, I don't mind not having a career while my kids are still young, okay? I don't mind it, okay, because um sometimes i feel like sometimes we try to make it look as if oh if you lose some years you know um I'm taking care of your kids then your your life is over no your life is not over some people worked in a particular industry for the past 10 years and all of a sudden they've switched they are now doing something completely different from what they read in school something completely different from where they worked before so the fact that like where there's a way there's a way okay like if tomorrow for some reason i need to go and look for a job i will find a good job like i'll be find it <laughs> don't worry don't worry about me i'll go find them what are some important lessons you've learned from your own mother that you apply to your own parenting um i think a lot of lessons so my mom was very hands-on as well i think sometimes we think we don't we don't know how much we are getting from our parents until we actually um 
start having our own kids okay so i think because my mom was very hands-on she wasn't really she had a career but she resigned because of my younger brother you guys know the whole story if you've been following me she resigned because of my younger brother and we moved to abuja so from there she never really had a structured career she was baking she was sewing you know most of the time she was like she actually had a business running a business so my mom has always had something doing but she has never really like when we started growing older i never really saw her like go to work and come back in the evening like normal nine to five you know mothers okay so i think it has actually informed the way i am as well my mom is very very creative and she's very hands-on another lesson i have learned from my mom is to give my kids my best even if it is not the best okay as long as it is my best that is good enough okay so growing up i saw my mom do a lot for us she sacrificed a lot for us and you know now sometimes funny enough my mom is always the one now advising women don't kill yourself for your children or your children are going to grow they are going to be independent this and that this and that she's the one that's always advising women that now because my mom literally like give up a lot for her children however i see the benefits of giving up a lot for your children not giving up too much though but you know i see the benefits because when it comes to how we all turned out of course she wasn't perfect of course you know she made some mistakes but when it comes to how we all turned out we all turned out really good i was saying uh, as much as you don't want to lose yourself because of your kids, it is worth it to put in your best for your kids, okay? How do you prioritize self-care and maintain your own well-being while being a mother? The same thing I said before, delegate, 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 and focus on the most important things, and then have time for your own self as well. Like, when I, when I want to take care of myself, when I want to do my own thing, when I want to be lazy, okay not even just do my own thing or what when i want to be lazy and do nothing and just lounge around and, and fap around or anything like that <laughs> when i want to just be a waste woman okay i do it no guilt attached okay i do it without any guilt because i know that i have done enough okay so yeah that is it like when i bounce back i bounce back and i'm good to go what are your favorite activities or traditions that you enjoy with your children um i don't know I don't really have traditions per se. Do I have traditions? Mm, traditions I enjoy with my children. Do I really have traditions I, I do with my kids? I don't know. Maybe spending time with them, watching movies. Oh, yeah, 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 yes, yes. I love watching movies with my kids. Sometimes I love going to the supermarkets with my kids. We don't really do that much. Taking them out, going for birthday parties, taking them out to go and swim. Just spending time with my kids and taking them out. I actually enjoy it. Even though while it's happening, I'll be stressed out like this. <laughs> Sit down, don't go there, come back here. If you, if you, if you move, if you leave that place that, you know, I go through a lot, like it's stressful, but it's always rewarding at the end of the day. How do you handle disagreements or differences in parenting styles with your partner if applicable? The thing is this, right? Me and my husband don't really have that many, that much or that many differences when it comes to our parenting style, right? However, I don't like my, my husband disciplining my kids. I don't know what it is. Like, I, I just used to try and hold myself. Like, I hold myself and I just, you know, move away. Especially when I know that the child actually deserves it, what they're getting. And it's not, he doesn't even beat that much, or funny enough. But I don't really like it, okay? So, what I just do is I just remind myself that they are as much his kids as they are my kids, okay? And I married an intelligent person who has sense and who has the fear of God, okay? So, I can't come and be acting like I'm the only one that has sense and knows how to train children. Him too. He's capable of training children and, you know, them turning out fine, okay? So, when he, he has to do some things or discipline them, I allow it, okay? Even though I'll still be choking mouth though, and I'll, or I'll be carrying face. He needs to say that I'll wear my face to just squeeze. Uh, I'll be carrying face, but, <laughs> but I have to just let go and allow him. If not, my kids are going to, to spoil because I can't... I, they can't have just one type of discipline and they can't just have discipline from just one person they have to understand that we, me and my husband work as a team okay so that's it and then some other things these are things here and there um parenting style sometimes there are things that i want them to have he doesn't want them to have it while some things he wants them to have i don't want him, them to have it okay so we just compromise sometimes even though i always get the upper hand uh, because i'm a woman i mean i mean <laughs> and i spend more time with them so i usually get the upper hand when it comes to those things however we just compromise where where it need be but generally our parenting styles are quite similar how has technology and social media impacted your experience as a mother both positively and negatively okay so negatively let me start from the negative okay negatively i'll say social media has made me a little bit more scared 
or more fearful even though i pray against it and i try to bind and cast and all of that but it has made me more fearful because i have seen some things happen in real time that i would have just heard of before like i've seen some footage or some images that i'm like i, I wish i can scrub my brain off scrub those things off my brain right so it has made me a it has made me more anxious when it comes to taking care of my kids or leaving my kids with people or you know things concerning my kids right um the second thing technology has done is that it has made me struggle sometimes to spend time with my kids because i'm pressing phone i'm scrolling on instagram i'm scrolling on on even though yes it's part of my job but i will not lie that is i'm always scrolling on instagram or youtube because it's part of my job no there are times that i'm just lounging and just doing nothing and just scrolling on tiktok right and at that point my ch my children need me you know it now becomes a struggle something that would have just been me just dropping my phone and going to meet them it's not like ah oh, i have to drop my phone and go and meet these children so i don't like that part anytime i catch myself doing that i'm like no this is not how it should be also with my kids now they like technology as well i've had to seize their tabs i've had to reduce their screen time i've had to reduce how much tv they watch okay because of technology um, because they were getting addicted or I feel like they were getting addicted so the, those are the negatives now for the positives I have learned a lot of parenting hacks and parenting information or parenting advice from the internet okay a lot so much parenting hacks Opa, Opa, like people on the internet are giving premium advice for free okay premium advice for free so it has helped me a lot with a lot of parenting hacks it has also helped me to understand that i am not alone like those things that you think is just you it's not just you we are all going through it together we're all plenty that are going through it okay so it's not just you don't bother yourself don't don't beat yourself up when some things happen it is normal okay so that's one that those are the positives that you know technology has done for me and also even though technology has made me a little bit more anxious it has also eased my anxiety because I have cameras, okay? That's also technology. So because I have cameras in my house and I can watch what my kids are doing when I'm not at home, I would say it has helped to ease some of that anxiety as well, even though I can't watch them when they're in school. I think they have cameras, but parents don't have access. But yeah, I wish parents had access so that I can be watching my kids when they're in school. What are your thoughts on the concept of mom guilt and how do you deal with it, if at all? I don't deal with mom guilt. I made a whole video about it, why I don't deal with mom guilt, what causes mom guilt, okay? I know they accept guilt will not be my own, okay? I know they accept blame will not be my own. I am not going to accept faults where it is not my fault okay so that i feel like go and watch that video no need that let me not start talking about it i'll link it down below if i remember god please let me remember to link it down below how do you encourage and support your children's development and independence as they grow the thing is this because my i have three kids and there are three girls and you know we have cameras and all of that and i also created a playroom for them I noticed that I am now less hands-on when it comes to their playtime. I allow them play on their own with each other. I just hear shouts sometimes and I rush there to go and know what's happening. But for the most part, my kids are becoming more independent. They are becoming more creative. They, they create games and create play for themselves. Sometimes they carry the play and reach my side. They carry it into my bedroom. They carry it to other places. I remind them that they have a playroom for a reason, okay? But because they have their own space and they have each other, I am less involved in their playtime and their, I'm, I'm seeing independence in them as well, including Sophia. In fact, Sophia, I feel like Sophia has been forced to grow up faster. She matured faster than her siblings because she has two sisters to learn from basically, okay? And you know, when it comes to doing chores and stuff like that, I give them more chores now than before. Before, I couldn't give Cora breakable plates to carry from upstairs downstairs. Like, no, I'll just give her plastic plate or plastic you know bottles to carry downstairs but now i give her my tray she brings my whole food to me sometimes upstairs with my food breakable plates glass cup everything she brings it up to me in a tray and she takes it back downstairs okay i used to tell myself what's the worst that can happen the worst that can happen is that the thing will fall and break her hair but she, she will learn how to carry it better next time and so far she hasn't broken any plates or stuff like that so i think my kids are you know they're improving also, even with cleaning their playroom and cleaning their room and getting dressed, even Sophia now dresses herself. Like, she chooses outfits and she dresses herself, except it's something she cannot wear by herself. But she just goes to her room, goes to her drawer, takes her clothes and wears them. Then sometimes she'll come and meet me and say, Mommy, help me zip. Mommy, help me button. Those. So that's it. Those are the questions from motherhood. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any, you know, thing to add. Let me know your thoughts on all my answers. And if you have any more answers or any more questions, let me know in the comment section. Thank you guys so much for watching. 
watching. I actually enjoyed filming this video and I think I'm going to film more like this. I'm just going to go and ask chat GPT. I don't get topic. Give me topic, okay? And I'm going to come here and I'll film it. Anyway, guys, see you in my next video. Bye, guys. Mwah.